If you haven't built many engines before and you just dive in one day and decide you want to build an engine and you end up with a bunch of pieces in your garage either from the machine shop or from um, a rotating assembly that you purchased and you've got to figure out how to put the pistons on the rods the correct way in the case of a floating piston. Uh, if it were not a floating uh, piston, then the machine shop would likely have installed the pistons on the rods for you. But in the case of a floating piston, um, they come disassembled and you have to put the wrist pin in and the snap rings that hold that um, wrist pin into the piston so that the connecting rod is attached. Uh, if you're unfamiliar, a floating wrist pin not only allows the connecting rod to articulate with respect to the piston, but the wrist pin itself is also able to rotate in its bore. I'm not sure if that's coming through on the camera, but um, in um, most engine construction, certainly any factory engine with, with few exceptions, uh, the wrist pin itself is installed by uh, heating the connecting rod so that the small end opens up or expands. Then you slide, you put it in a jig and you stick the piston on there and then you slide the wrist pin through very quickly using a jig to make sure that it ends up in the right place. But then the wrist pin ends up, as the connecting rod cools, the wrist pin ends up rotating with the connecting rod. And so the connecting rod and the wrist pin will rotate together in the piston bore. In the case of a full floating uh, piston arrangement as this is, the I can hold the wrist pin here and I can rotate the connecting rod. Um, and so the, the wrist pin, the piston, and the connecting rod can all articulate independently of each other. And it reduces friction. So if you've got to install these things together, you have to know which way the pistons go in the bore, which way the connecting rod gets installed on the piston, and how the connecting rod gets installed with regard to the crankshaft. And it can be a little confusing. Many piston manufacturers help you out by uh, placing an arrow on the top surface of the piston. That arrow will typically point towards the front of the engine. So whether you're installing it on the left bank or right bank is irrelevant. Uh, the arrow will point towards the front of the engine. In the case of these pistons, these valve reliefs go towards the intake manifold side or top side of the engine. Uh, this flat portion goes down towards the bottom side of the engine. So whether they're on the left bank or the right bank, these valve reliefs are towards the top. So that helps you figure out how the pistons go in the bore. Next thing you need to know is which way the connecting rods go on. And um, the reason I say that is because the connecting rod has two different sides to it. This side right here has a bevel all the way around this surface here. The other side is flat. And so you have to know which side the bevel should be on. That way you can install the connecting rod properly on the piston. And it's really easy to figure out. When you look down through the bore of the cylinder towards the crankshaft, your piston is either going to end up on the forward side of the journal or the aft side of the journal, depending on which bank of the cylinder we're talking about. And the beveled side of the connecting rod goes towards the outside edge of the journal. And that's because the journal itself is radiused or rounded where the journal meets the crankshaft. And so the bevel that's placed in here is designed so that the connecting rod doesn't bind on that bevel. And so if we have two connecting rods, and we will, one on either side of the engine, the flat sides of the connecting rods will be against each other. 
and the beveled side of the connecting rods will be towards the outer edges of the journal. And so once you've got the correct orientation of the piston and then you've got the correct orientation of the connecting rod, uh, then you can go ahead and put them together and prepare them for installation. So I've got four of the pistons installed. I'm working on numbers um, seven and three, the third journal back here. And I just wanted to take a minute to reposition the camera and uh, give a good shot of the connecting rod on the journal. And you should be able to make out what I was talking about with the bevel on the connecting rod. So this side of the connecting rod has a flat surface and this side has an angled surface. And that's because this corner of the journal is rounded, it's radiused. And if this side were straight, then that sharp corner in the bottom would dig into that radius. And so the connecting rod is purposely beveled on the side facing the outer edge of the journal to clearance that radiance. This one is as well, but you can't see it because it's facing me. But what you probably can see if I shine the light down in here is the flat surface on these two connecting rods against each other. Now there's a measurement that you have to take for the rod to journal clearance, side clearance. And the way that's done is by taking a feeler gauge when the caps are on and torqued and jamming the feeler gauge down one side or the other and pushing the rods to, to the opposite side and um, measuring the maximum width you're able to get uh, a feeler gauge in. And that'll tell you how much the rods can move back and forth on the journal. But this is a good visual showing you the angle here of the bevel facing the journal and the straight facing the opposing connecting rod. And if you haven't done that properly, uh, your engine is likely to be short-lived, unfortunately. <laughs>